I bring you good news of great joy, for to you is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Jesus has arrived in grace and mystery, renewing faded hopes and announcing peace to a weary world. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Jesus comes among us in power and glory, inspiring joy and calling us lives that are full of God's love. Jesus, the light of the world, is born. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corners of our lives. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corners of our world. God is with us. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, as we celebrate this Christmas, tra transform our hearts and our lives so that your good news is not an old story, but a fresh truth lived out every day through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome everyone to our virtual Christmas Eve service. We're so glad you could join us. Now let us come before our God and let us pray. God of Christmas joy, the countdown is over. Tonight we'll follow the songs of the angels and the footsteps of the wise men of old to come and see your love made flesh. As we remember and give thanks for the baby found in the manger so long ago. For the words of the prophet have come to pass, that to us a child is born, and for us your son was given. And so we prepare our hearts to hear once more the story of the birth of our Savior, as we stop for a moment to lift up our voice in prayer and praise to you, our great creator. Holy Lord, it was you who first sent the angel Gabriel to Mary to proclaim the good news of the coming Messiah. It was you who gave comfort to Joseph in his time of doubt. And it was you who sent the star and caused the angels to awaken the shepherds with joyful songs of praise and good news about a child born for all of God's people. Heavenly Father, on this night when we celebrate the birth of your only Son, we cannot help but lift our voice in prayer and praise for all the good that has come into our life because you love us so much you gave us Jesus. We praise and thank you, Lord, for the gift of the baby in the manger, for the good news that Jesus' story doesn't end with the cradle, but instead goes to the cross and the garden of resurrection. We thank and praise you, Lord, for the promise that Jesus walks with us always. For this is a promise you have given to all those who you call to be your own. Holy Lord, send your Holy Spirit to rest upon us this night as we celebrate the story of our salvation. Help us to hear this well-loved story with new ears as we celebrate and give thanks for the birth of Emmanuel, of God with us now and forevermore. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
When sin departs before his grace, then life and health come in its place. When sin departs before his grace, then life and health come in his place. Heaven and earth with joy may sing, all for to see the newborn king. All out of darkness we have light, made the angels sing this night. All out of darkness we have light, which made the angels sing this night. Glory to God, we sing again, now and forevermore. Amen. Reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7, the proclamation of the Savior. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us the child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The seal of the Lord God will accomplish this. This is the Old Testament scripture. Amen. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. This is a phrase I've heard most of my life. It's a promise that supported people during the ages as they waited for the Messiah to come. But it's also the promise that many of us have been holding on to this year, as this year is so different than any others we can remember, as our world has been held hostage to a virus that we're not able to see and only now are able to truly start the fight against it. We know today what it's like to live in the darkness of uncertain times. We know the fear of what might happen next. And we now know how, in part, how the people of Israelite must have felt so long ago when they lived in uncertain times. And yet, just like those who came before us, we today still have hope, as even during the darkest moments of our life, we're able to live and act as the future is going to be better than our current situation. And we're able to do this because of the child found lying in the manger, the one who Isaiah first spoke about so long ago, the Messiah, Christ Jesus. Today in our preparation for Christmas, we start our service with the candle of hope already lit because even during the darkest days, God's hope shines the brightest. And we gather to stand witness to this life-giving truth. For just like Isaiah before us, we're able to proclaim our hope in the Lord, the one who has never let us down. For to us, a child is born, 
To us, a son is given. And because of this wonderful first Christmas gift, our world will never be the same. As the hope of the season can't be drowned out. Instead, it burns brighter and brighter, chasing away the darkness of the longest day and leading us back into life as we know it. We gather today to celebrate the hope we have in our God, in our heart, even if at times it feels more like an ember than a raging fire. We gather tonight to celebrate that because Jesus was born in our world, things will be different. For hope has been set loose on the world. And because of this good news, nothing will ever be the same. For because of this hope, we know that the lost shall be found, the sick shall be healed, and the dead will live again. All because God loves us so much that he gave us Emmanuel, God with us now and forevermore. For Christ has come to be our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. I'd like to invite you to take a moment to thank the Lord for the hope you have today and all the hope that you'll find in all your tomorrows. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this night for your endless hope. We thank you for the moments in our life when we feel lost in the darkness of this passing world. As your holy light shines the brightest to guide our feet back to you and your people. We thank you, loving God, for the many signs of hope we have during this holy season. From the writings of the prophets of old to the promise of the child found in the manger. Help us, we pray, to hold on to the hope that we have in you. And acts of the world may see that things will get better. Because this is what you have promised to all of your beloved children. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. 
chapter 1, verses 39 to 55. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you young among women, and blessed is the child you, are, you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servants. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful, to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised to our ancestors. My soul magnifies the Lord. This is the start of Mary's most famous prayer, a response to the good news of the promised child soon to enter into the world that longs to meet him. I often can't help but wonder how long it took Mary to move from fear to acceptance that we hear in this beautiful prayer. Would you have been able to accept God's good news as Mary did so long ago? Or would your mind still be filled with worry about things that could happen or what could possibly go wrong? There's a reason we often hear Mary's story on the week when we light the candle of peace, as between Mary and Joseph we're able to see how God is able to help his people move from distress and fear to acceptance and peace. For they know in their hearts they won't have to face the trials of the day by themselves. And the good news is we're given this same sense of peace in our life if we ask for it. For this is one of the good gifts that God has promised to all who dare to follow him. A peace that's not only able to still our souls and ease our fears, but a peace that's able to transform the world around us. Mary's prayer reminds us of this truth, for Jesus not only came to give us personal peace, but also to show us the way to true peace on earth, a peace that can spread to all people. Mary's prayer is a prayer for God's great revolution, the transformation of our world from what it is now to what it could become, a place where the weak and lowly are raised up, a world where the hungry would be fed and those who have enough would not seek more. This is the world we long to see, a world when heaven and earth are as one, and the only one who can lead us to this long-awaited paradise is a child found in the manger, the one who was born to be our Prince of Peace. And this is one of the reasons why God gave us Jesus, to show us a better way to live our life to teach us how to become channels of God's everlasting peace. We light the candle of peace not because we're already God's peacemakers, but as a sign that we long to become who God knows we can be. Those who help transform the world for the better, 
those who leave God's holy peace with all who they meet, so that one day Mary's prayer will come to pass, and all will be able to come and join us as we worship the child found in the manger. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we give you thanks for your gift of peace. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the moments in our life when we feel your peace rest upon our souls, upon our hearts. We ask for your support as we seek to become your peacemakers, for our world longs to know and feel the peace that only you can give. Help us to be ready to take part in your great revolution so that our lives may be used to help make heaven and earth be as one. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. That your baby boy would give sight to a blind man. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss the little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the land. your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? And the sleeping child you're holding is the babe I am. The Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 14. The birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. 
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will bring great joy to all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Thanks be to God. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. This is a good news the angel sang so long ago, and it's a song we echo in our hearts this night as we rejoice with the lighting of the candle of joy because our hearts are overflowing with this good news that Christ is born. Christmas has always been a season of joy, from the joy of waking up to open your presents, to the joy of sitting down to the feast with family and friends. And while this year, our joy might feel a little bit muted, I know we'll still be able to rejoice because we've already been given the greatest gift in the world, Emmanuel, God with us. And our great creator is inviting you and I to come and see this wonderful thing for ourselves, just as we are right now. We don't have to be filled to overflowing with the Christmas spirit. We just need to be willing to allow Jesus to fill us up on all that we're lacking, be it hope, peace, joy, or love. Our God is calling us right now to come and see, come and see the wonderful way that he's going to change our world forever. Come and see how we can bear witness to this great truth that God loves us so much that he gave us his only son. We may not hear the song of the angels firsthand, but know that you tonight are invited to come and see God's love made flesh. Because our God knows that this year has been hard, and so he wants to fill you with his everlasting joy, to remind you that the gifts of the season don't vanish when we take down the tree, but instead can live in our hearts and our minds all year long. For God is now with us, in good times and in bad. God is with us. That's what Emmanuel means, that no matter what we face in the world, or the one yet to come, we know that God stands with us ready to support us, ready to forgive us, and ready to lead us from this world to the one we're still waiting to see. So rejoice, people of the living God. Shout glory to God in the highest, and come and see this wonderful thing that God has done for us. For the angels proclaim, great news to all people. For a child is born, lying in a manger, and he shall be the salvation of all. So let us rejoice, for Christ is with us, now and forevermore. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the joy of this season. We thank you for the witness of the angels and the shepherds, whose glad tidings still ring strong and true. We thank you, Lord, for the joy we receive in our own invitation to come see Jesus in the manger. For Christ came to live among us, 
sharing our joy and teaching us that joy has no boundaries, as a smile is contagious and can transform a person's day. Help us, we pray, to share our joy with the world around us, so that all people may have something to celebrate this most holy season. Thank you, God, for the gift of Jesus. We pray for your help to stay joyful long after we leave Bethlehem behind. Amen. I heard about this baby boy who came to earth to bring us joy. I just want to sing the song to you. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift. With every breath I'm singing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bethlehem, expecting child, they searched the inn to find a place for you were coming soon. There was no room for them to stay, so in a manger filled with hay, God's only son was born. Left their flock by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angel said, You'll find him in a manger bed, Emmanuel, our Savior. Our reading today is from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 20. When the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph 
and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. For those of you who have children, I want to invite you to remember the very first time you held them in your hand. The first time you saw their face. The first time you knew that they had a piece of your heart forever. This is one of the last images we have in our Christmas story. Mary bearing witness to the shepherds' visits, their stories of angels singing glory to God in the highest, all for the child she held in her arms. This is why the last candle we light in our Advent journey is the candle of love, as we remember the love that Mary felt at this moment, about how everything just felt right, even though for a time everything had gone wrong. And yet, when she looked at the baby Jesus in her arms, she knew everything would be right in the world. All she could feel was love in her heart, and it's this love that we have gathered to celebrate this night, a love so strong that it was able to calm a storm. A love so powerful it was able to heal the sick and cast out demons. A love so overwhelming that it gathered people from all around the world to come and experience. A love so moving that it is able to overcome death itself. Love is what brings us each year to the manger of our Lord. A love that God has for us love of the story of our salvation and a love that we're called to share with the world around us as on that christmas day so long ago love was born and wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger for the world to come and see for our god loves us so much he gave us his only son so that we could be healed, so that we could be forgiven, and so we could be brought back into a right relationship with our great creator. As we leave this time of worship, we leave knowing that we are loved and that there is a place for us in God's holy kingdom where we'll always be welcomed back home by the child once found in the manger. For this is our true Christmas gift, one we can never grow out of, but one that we can seek to grow into with each year that passes, the love of our Heavenly Father. And from this love, peace, joy, and hope will surely follow, for these are the best gifts that our Heavenly Father wants all of his beloved children to have. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the love we feel this night. We thank you for the many ways your love surrounds us, holding us tight when we feel alone, inspiring us to move forward from darkness into light, from death into life abundant. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your love made flesh, for the child found lying in a manger, and the wonderful man he became for our sake. Thank you, Lord, for our Christmas story, for the way in which the story became more than something we hear each year. 
but instead become something we're invited to live as we hear again the good news about the wonderful way you chose to save our world. As we rediscover hope with Isaiah and the rest of your prophets, who were first given warning about this great thing to happen, as we find peace of mind during hard times as Joseph once did, as we rediscover our joy in you, our great creator, as we hear the angels sing, and dare to follow their songs as the shepherds once did so long ago, as we find love with Mary and with Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the gift of this night, for the good news that no matter what happens in the world around us, we are always invited to come to Bethlehem and see for ourselves your love made flesh. Amen.
The last candle we light tonight is the Christ candle. What more can we say other than thank you, Lord? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of your Son. Thank you for the man Jesus becomes and for the hope he gave when he preached about the coming kingdom of heaven. Thank you for the peace that Jesus gave as he raised up the sick and brought the dead back to life. We thank you, Lord, for the joy that Christ sowed as he forgave the sinner and welcomed them to come and follow him. We thank you, Lord, for the love that Jesus showed us as he went to the cross for our sake. Thank you, mighty God, for the gift of Christ, for our Christmas story and our Easter story and all the other stories in between. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for loving us so much that you gave us your only Son, who not only showed us how to live as your people, but he continues to walk with us till heaven and earth are as one. Thank you, Lord, for Christ, our friend and our salvation, our Lord and our King. Thank you for the good news that to us a child is born and for us your Son is given. For because of this wonderful gift, our world will never be the same. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us come before God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this night when we celebrate the gift of your Son, we joyfully offer up to you our humble offerings. May they multiply and grow and serve your needs, so that throughout the next year we may continue to share your gifts of love, hope, peace, and joy. All this we pray in Christ's most holy name. Amen. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. 
on this Christmas Eve night, go with the light of Christ burning bright in your heart. Go now with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore.